If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hello and welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual coach. And today is Ascend Friday, which means that we are proving that the magic works. And that's what we do on this day. So today we are joined by Hannah, who is one of the people who won a free reading with me for the contest that we've been doing. And funny thing is that Hannah and I have been talking for a couple of years now, I think, right? <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah. Didn't know your name because your your screen name was Gaming Thea. That was all I knew. And so I've been calling you Gaming Thea forever because she's never told me her name before. So she won and she had to tell me her name. <laughs> so I was like, yay, I get to know who she, she is. Out. And I get to put a face to the person I've been talking to for two years online because she sends me messages and emails and things like that. And I'm like, yay. So see, I do respond to people. So if you want to know something, please reach out, right? It works, right? all the time. Yeah. And I do respond fairly quickly. So, okay. So with that, we're going to get into your reading. We already covered that, you know, the chakras and we already covered that you will ask questions as we go. And you're, you know, I'm going to remind you that, you know, 20, 30 minutes after this is over, I won't remember like 80% of what I said. So it's okay. Not a big deal. And so the, final thing is to remind you that we are looking for the blocks. We are not looking for the work that you've done. So don't think that I'm being negative. We're just trying to figure out what's in the way of the next level. And don't take it as a universal report card because it is not about your whole life. It is about what level you're on. If you just came into a new level, there'll be a ton of blocks. If you're just finishing a level, there'll be a few blocks. It is just an indication of where you are in terms of clearing the current level. Okay. All right. I don't know why my, it, my ear itches so much today. So it might be about you because my ear does not usually itch. So it might be a listen closely thing. Oh boy. So, All right. Yeah. So hmm, that's interesting. All right. So with that, do I have permission to enter into your energy field for the purposes of this reading? Yes. Okay. If you have any shields, make a little Kelly sized permission space for me to come in. I'll be right there. Okay. So the first thing I'm getting is massive empath. Okay. You are the first thing that I got, they, they wouldn't even let me see the outside of your aura until I acknowledged that your aura was already all over me because, <laughs> because you're such an empath. And anytime you're connecting with somebody, you're, you're just sharing your aura with them. And that's what empaths do. This is our way of communing, right? And, you know, it's, it's all well and fine until you're commuting with somebody who's having experiences you would like not to have. And if you don't know how to shift that, then that's a problem, right? So that's what the boundaries for empaths, uh, the free course is on the website is about, right? So you'll be able to find that on spiritguides.com on pretty much most of the pages, <laughs> because I think everybody needs to have this and it's free, right? So uh, I'm sorry, not spiritguides.com, spiritguideschool.com. Yeah, I can talk. It's early. It's not that early, <laughs> but I feel like it's early. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing that I, that I got for you is, is just this in, intensive empath thing. And so what that says to me, because most of the people I read are empaths and it doesn't hit me like this. Okay. So what this says to me is that you have a huge amount of energy available to you that you spend shoving your energy field out to others. And if you learned to pull that energy back in, like, like it's taught in the program, right? If you taught, if you learn that you would have so much more power than you currently think you could possibly have, because it's that intensive when you're already out, right? That's what I'm saying. That was, I literally couldn't see anything else until I could acknowledge that that was there. Right. So, you know, we, we, one of the ways that we convince ourselves that we're not powerful is by dissipating our energies. 
We will do that either through expanding our energy field so that it's dissipated that way, or we will do it through distraction and taking on too many things at once, which I feel like is also a you thing. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and taking on too many people at once, right? There's also that piece where it's like, you're taking care of too many people at once right? So it's things and people and energy and all of the stuff. And that's how we convince ourselves that we're not powerful. Okay. So what they're telling me is you're a badass. You're very powerful. And there's the only reason you don't experience that in day-to-day -day life is because you spend your life distracting and, dis and dissipating your energy. And that if you would focus your energy in terms of pulling it in, your attention in one direction, then, you know, at least one primary direction, right? Not like, uh, is that possible? <laughs> I was going to say you can have hobbies, but you tend to hyper-focus. So that's a little challenging. So, but short-term hyper-focus is okay. Okay. But a single focus for your primary thing in life, right? Instead of doing like a, a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there and, a and deep dives in each of these things, and da, 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 right? Which is, you know, I think once you pull your energy in, you'll be able to focus better. I think that's part of the challenge is that your energy is being pulled in so many directions and being influenced by so many people's energies that it's making the 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 distractions worse. Okay. So, okay. Anything else there? No. Good. Okay. Now, can I see the outside? Yes. Anything relevant? No. Okay. Coming into the aura now. Here I come. Beware. I've been told I tickle. Interesting. Okay. So, you know, the old timey libraries with like floor to ceiling bookshelves and the overstuffed leather chair and the, you know, the whole thing. Right. And the, the little side reading table with a pile of books on it. That's, that's what I see you in. I see you sitting there with this pile of books and a pile of books behind you and around you. And you're just like absorbing as much information as humanly possible. It's, that's sort of the, the intent, that's the impression that this gives me, but it's, it's not a, because, how do I say this? So the library is inherently a relaxed space, right? It's a, it's a relaxing sitting and, you know, absorbing information, but it's not a stressed space, right? So the impression that I'm getting is that you are like consuming information, but it's no longer at a panicked state. feels like it used to be, but now it's more relaxed. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. All right. So the, anything else in here that's relevant? Cause it's just sort of a, where you are right now sort of thing feels, it feels very like not hermitage like, but it's more of a introvert, you know, here's my quiet space to go be by myself sort of thing, sort of the, that sort of energy that you're in right now. Does that align with your life? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Anything else relevant here? Okay. You reading, are you learning a lot about aliens right now? No, but recently, yes. Okay, because I've got this book flying over your head in sort of like an alien site type way. And I'm like, what, what, what is that? Okay, so yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, yeah, all right. That's all they wanted to show me is that there's there's that influence showing up in your life right now. Um, yeah, feels feels like a Pleiadian pull. Um, although I don't feel like that's what you were learning about. I feel like you were learning about like Arcturan or uh, I can't think of the other one, but I feel like you weren't learning about the Pleiadians. It was about something else. And, and the Pleiadians are saying, Hey, look at us too. Just so you know. Good to know. Okay. 
All right. So let's come into the seventh chakra. Or not. Okay. So what's happening is your, your crown chakra is closed and it's literally all the energy is coming in and then it's boiling up around and just, you know, it's just like, it's not actually going anywhere. It's just like spinning up and around. So like, imagine if a bunch of water were hitting a soft surface and there was like a cone around it, it would sort of do that bubbling thing that's spinning thing. I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's, that's what, it, okay. No, when you, so like let's something. go into the crown chakra. Yeah. My ear started ringing and I felt like I got like really high. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm trying so, to like come back sorry. down and focus. Yeah, that's my bad. So that's me trying to get in and not being able to get in. So apologies. But yeah, what's happening is your crown chakra is closed. So let me just check something. Hold on. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Go away, go away. Hold on. Yeah, okay. So you are a natural channel. And there is, re you have closed down your channeling so much that there's a don't notice me on it. <laughs> You're just like, Nope, close for business and don't notice me. I am not a channel. You don't see it. It doesn't matter. Go away, right? Yeah, this is this is a childhood thing. Um, it's like something came in and channeled through you, scared the crap out of you, you shut it down. Like, I would not be surprised if you did not remember this. It was so scary to you. <laughs> you probably buried the memory too. This particular thing... You know, it came in and, and, and just scared you. And you, so you shut it down so much and you were like, lim, 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 I'm not here. Lim, lim, lim. And it was a childhood spell, right? <laughs> the child's intention was like, no, right? So, you know, could you open it up again? Yes, you absolutely could. You would just have to decide that you wanted to do that. I would not recommend doing it until you learn how to not channel before you do it because you don't want to be channeling by accident. That's not good. Okay. Was it like childhood childhood or was it like past few years like do you have a sense of when it could have been or was it just you can tell something happened it to me it felt like childhood childhood did you have something happen recently a few years ago yeah okay yeah so it's possible that something got through the do not disturb and you just reinforced it. But the original one was, was when you were a child, because that's, it, it does feel like you were like six or seven years old is what this is saying to me. Um, and you know, as you lost awareness, as I tried to just come into your crown chakra, right. You were like being pushed out. So that you said you lost like grounding, right. I don't Yeah. Remember. I felt like I just like, disappeared for a moment yeah so that is that is what an unconscious channel would do so if something so clearly whatever block you have on it is not working because when i tried to come in just to test your field you started leaving your body and that's what unconscious channels do so it is possible that 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 you just gotten lucky that no, nothing else has tried other than the one that you had before so how do i fix that yeah, so that is a um, let me let me figure out why it's not working because the do not disturb is I think what's what the case is is that you have a do a don't notice me on there which is mostly effective if you've only had one experience um, so you know it's just if something goes yeah let's try it <laughs> bang you know. Uh, you know, instead of testing and asking, it just goes, Hey, let's see if this works. Right. That, that may be what happened to you because I really had a, when I went looking to see if you were a natural channel, because when I, when it, when it bubbled back up, I was like, hmm, I wonder if she's a natural channel. And I went to look, it was like, mm, don't look, mm -mm, don't look. So that's actually pretty effective. You know, I mean, how old are you? 23. 23. Okay. So it's worked for, you know, it's 23 minus six or seven, right? So it's worked for that many years. It's it, 
it's pretty effective. So the thing that you have to, to be, you know, the way that you don't channel is you just go, nope, nobody home. You're not allowed. Right. That's it, it. What's magic? Magic is intention. How do we do anything? We intend it. Right. So you just got to put it up there and be like, fuck off. Right. That's so that's what we're doing. Okay. So, but you are not actually running energy through your crown chakra right now. So I would not be surprised if you were feeling more tired than you would like to on a regular basis. And so let me check your root chakra. Hold on. Yeah, not a lot of energy running there either. So you have a hard time with energy? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I moved recently and I'm on a third floor and I don't know if it's just a mental thing, but I feel like grounding has been really difficult because I'm like trying to extend the roots and they just don't feel like they go that far. And I know it's just a mental thing, but. Just pretend that you're on the first floor. Okay. And then ground that way. Their energy does not experience time and space. So, <laughs> you know, just pretend that your apartment's on the first floor and ground and you'll be fine. Just ignore the other floors. You're probably better off to be doing it that way anyway, because otherwise you're sending energy through other people's spaces, which is not ideal. I was trying to send it down the outside of the building and that just felt messy. Yeah, it's way too much mental load. <laughs> yeah. just, just, you know, connect into mother earth. So here's the thing. Mother earth is a physical thing, but she is also an energetic representation. And so you can always just connect into her no matter where you are. You could be in an airplane and you could connect to mother earth. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I don't recommend it, but you could. Okay. So, you know, just connect in to the archetype of her or imagine that you're on the bottom floor. All of this is imaginary reality to begin with. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So tree meditation is your prescription. Okay. That you can find on the, the spirit guide school website as well in the beginner section. And uh, so, yeah, check that out. And that will solve both the crown and the root chakra energy flow issues. This, what, you, what you're in right now is called the energetic fetal position, which is, well, I call it that. It's not, it's my turn. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like acting like it's out there. It's my turn, but I call it the energetic fetal position because basically it's the way that you can, you, you know, you protect yourself when you're feeling overstressed. And I feel like the crown chakra is, is closed a lot for you. And that the root chakra is a function of the move and the issues that you're having. We all always uproot when we're physically moving from one space to another, you know, our home, right? And so, yeah, you just haven't reestablished your grounding there. Although it does feel like there's a steel plate under your feet too, which is what you do when you give somebody else permission to pull your feet out from under you by passing judgment on your life. Yeah. So that one would be a thing you might want to revoke permission on because typically the values that they are judging your life with are not the same as the values that you are living your life with. And therefore you are setting yourself up for pain for no good reason. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, coming back to the seventh chakra. Let's see if I can get in here now. Uh, yes. Okay. Seeing a little bit of mind on overdrive, but again, if just like in the aura, it feels like it's slowing down. Have you, have, have you started a meditation practice or like recently like cleared a lot of things out of your life? I mean, I know you said you just moved, but maybe it's just because the move is slow, it has, is done and you're no longer as stressed, but it feels like the, the brain running a million miles a minute has slowed somewhat. Not, not entirely. Don't get me wrong. It's still there, but that it's not as insane as it was not that long ago. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I've been doing the tree meditation and another meditation and I've been being mindful about the mind on overdrive thing. Okay. All right. Then it, it, it's working. So there you go. Okay. Let's check the masculine. Okay. So what I'm seeing is that you don't have so much trouble structuring things 
although you really don't like to structure them, but you can, but it, it falls apart in the creative side that like you, you're, you lose track, you lose cohesion on your practical stuff when you engage in the creative stuff. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So they're saying that you're super strong in the creative side and that you have really mastered a lot of those skills and that the, the goal now is to balance with the left brain side, right? And so not to give up on the creative pursuits, they're not saying that, but they're saying, you know, spend more of your focus on balancing the left brain side so that you can then be whole brained, right? That you're looking to bring masculine and feminine into balance. And right now the feminine, the creative side has been very over used, over expanded for the, for how much the logical side has been done, right? Not that it's overdone in general, but just, you need to bring it into balance. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. It feels almost like, it feels almost like you go into the creative stuff when you feel overwhelmed on the logic stuff, on the, on the planning and the left brain stuff. It feels like the creative stuff is your solace from that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so the, the invitation is to do it more often in shorter bouts for the left brain stuff. Okay. So like set yourself a timer for 15 minutes and just do the left brain stuff for 15 minutes and then take a break, go sing a song or, you know, paint something or whatever. Right. And then come back in half an hour to the left brain stuff again. Right. So that way you can, you're, the, the reason that you get overwhelmed is because you're not building uh, capacity, right? You're, you're pushing and then you're overdoing and then you're going, Bleh, right? And it's like you explode it and then it's like messy for a while because <laughs> you can't get back to it because you exploded it, right? So you need to slowly build the capacity so you're not bursting the balloon every time and having to start back from scratch. So do it in small bouts. There's something known as a Pomodoro timer that would probably be helpful for you. P-O-M-O-D-O-R-O, -O, you can Google it, but it gives you, you know, 15 or 20 minutes on and then five minutes off and then 20 minutes on and five minutes off, that sort of thing. You could do that too. The, um, the other piece that's happening is that you're going into overwhelm. And so there is part of you where your inner child is trying to run the bus. Okay. You probably had a, a parent who, who modeled this for you, where they were their inner child your whole life and they were, yeah, yeah okay. So your inner child is incapable of running the bus, but they want to because that's what they think they're supposed to do and they love you and they want to take care of you. And so when you start to feel overwhelmed, I want you to go up to the inner child and look at them with their, they're sitting on the, see it as a school bus, right? And they're sitting in the school bus seat on like four, you know, like old phone books, right? I know you're too young for that, but the phone books are like this thick, right? They're like two inches thick. So they're up on four phone books so that they can just barely see over this massive steering wheel that they can only hold the tiniest little bit of, right? And their feet can't reach the pedals, but they're trying, right? And so they're working hard. And you just look at them and say, what a great job you're doing. Oh my God, you're so amazing. Great job, go play in the back. <laughs> right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive for a while, okay? And, and just send them to the back of the bus to take a nap or play or whatever. Right. And then when you sit down as your adult self in the driver's seat, moving the, the books, obviously, <laughs> then you'll, you'll find, you'll feel less overwhelmed. Right. So just keep that in mind that, that if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's usually your inner child trying to drive the bus. Okay. All right. Well, we're talking about a lot for this one small chakra. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Anything else I need to know in here? Nope, that's everything. Okay, let's come down into the third eye. We're gonna start with the transmitter. No, oh, good transmitter, nice and strong. And it's coming back. 
All right. You got you got good flow on your transmitter, rock and rolling. Let me see how the receiver's doing. Mm, not as much. Okay, so transmitters when you intend to go out and get information and you bring it back. The, the receiver is, is sort of what's in the ethers around you that you're picking up on and you're not open to what's in the ethers around you. This feels more like a reaction to a, you know, not so happy childhood space where you didn't want to pick up on all the stuff that was going on around you. It, it feels more like that than a, I don't want to see what the universe is telling me piece doesn't feel like that. So the reminder here, again, this is an inner child response. And the reminder is just, just say, you know what? I, I, I'm in a safe space now. I don't have to worry about it. I can pick up on what's going on around me and it'll be safe. It's okay. And so to remind yourself of that, and when you do the boundaries for empaths piece more significantly, get it, get it to default level, that's going to help as well, because you're going to not feel like you're subject to other people's stuff. And when you're not subject to that, you'll be more open to, to feeling what's going on around you in terms of, you know, picking up on, on the intuitive hits, right? Okay. Ooh, good trust in the universe. Hmm. Good job. All right. Which also means that you're being good to yourself. So, because if you're not being good to yourself, you'll have a hard time trusting the universe. So this feels like, feels like your self-care has taken an uptick. So well done on that too. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's look at power issues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this, there's a, a refusal to admit your own power. This does not feel past life for you like it does for some people. This feels more like what we were talking about before with the, I, I can't believe that I'm powerful. That would be a lot. And I'm not really sure I'm ready to do that. And so therefore I'm going to distract myself and pull all my energy out. And, and I, it, yeah, ah, 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 right. It's that this again, feels very ch inner childlike. Okay. This, I mean, it's unusual for me to see this much inner child stuff at this level. So it is clear that one of your main themes is going to be doing some work with your inner child. Okay. So, because this feels very much like, oh no, just little old me, I can't, I, I can't be powerful. Little old me, I can't do that. You know, it's, it's, it feels very young, right? Okay. Anything else in here I need to know about? Definitely not stealing the creativity because you're doing that hardcore, another inner child thing. That's a positive inner child thing. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's everything in the chakra. Okay, let's come down to the third chakra. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so I always get this one as a physical. And so I'm, I'm like opening and closing my mouth a lot, almost like I'm trying to chew on something. <laughs> I'm not getting my teeth already all the way closed though. So, but there's no energy coming out. So it's like, it's like I'm getting ready and I'm closing. Uh, 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 right. And so the, this is the energy of self-expression that I'm pulling on here. This is what's what I'm representing here. And so what that says to me is that you want to express yourself. You even try to express yourself and then not so much right? It's like, there's, there's a, like you're in process, right? This is what it feels like. It feels like you're in process. So again, it feels like progress, but not quite there yet. Right. So let's see what's, what's in the way of that. Hold on. Yeah. There's some people pleasing communication going on, which I was not surprised with, with the inner child theme going on, which is avoidance of, of conflict, right? It's like, I'll tell you what you want to hear so that I don't have to deal with the conflict. Right. Um, this is a child energetic because it's what we use to manipulate our parents into, you know, being okay with us. Right. Um, and still a little bit of dependence and asking for permission in there too. So this feels like an emotional dependence, not a physical dependence in this case. 
so it's a tell me I'm okay sort of energy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's around decision-making, but it's, it's more around, it's not that you don't feel like you could make the decision. It feels like you want approval for the decision. So that's the difference for, for a lot of people. It's about, oh, I can't make the decision without getting input. Right. But for you, it's, it's no, I want you to approve of my decision. So again, inner child, big time inner child stuff. Okay. All right. Let's come, let's see what else is in here. So I feel like there's some, I feel like there was, I feel like this block was huge originally that, that there's a block that there was a block around wanting to be invisible. And I feel like that was big. Like I, I, you know, don't notice me, don't see me. I'm not here. You know, it's safer to not be seen. Right. But it feels like that has dissipated almost completely that, that like, I can only see the, I see like the, the memory of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So clearly you, you've done some work there too. I can see. I see your progress more than I see most people's progress on this. So well done. Good, good, good. So yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll talk about the inner thing, inner child piece at the end, because all of this is inner child so far. Okay. Coming down. Is that, is there anything else? Hold on. Mm, okay. So what they're saying to me is that, as you're trying to overcome the people pleasing communication thing, you are literally sticking your neck out, right? Sticking your chin out, right? It's like, come on, hit me right here, right here, right here. <laughs> that's that sort of sense of I dare you, right? <laughs> that's the energy that I'm getting. And that is is not surprising as a response to having avoided conflict. And, you know, because conflict, when you avoid it for a long time, tends to blow up very big. Um, but I want to invite you to reconsider what conflict is for yourself because in the effort to avoid it, you are inviting it, right? Uh, or in the effort to engage it, rather, you are inviting it. So there's a difference. So instead of going, eh, you know, eh, come at me, right? There's, when you engage with, with disagreement early, before there's an emotional charge built up, it is simply a, nah, I don't believe that. Or a, well, I think differently. It's, it's not a big deal at all, right? And so because you're afraid of it, you're like gutting through it, right? And like, mm, right? And I'm gonna encourage you to not feel like it has to be big, to just make it be another statement, another sentence coming out of your mouth, not a big, like it, it's not necessarily going to be a big conflict. Okay. Every now and again, it will be, and that's okay. But most of the time it's just a, oh yeah, that didn't work for me. Right. <laughs> and, and it's, and the, if the other person is conscious, then they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't my intent. Right. And it's not a big deal. Right. If they're not conscious, then you may be needing to gut up for it, but you know, it just depends on who you're talking to and pick your targets for this, you know, pick, pick the person that you're going to do this practice with so that you are safe to do the practice and get used to it and then know what to expect from the people who may or may not be as conscious. Right. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, that's everything here. Okay. Coming into the heart chakra. Okay, heart chakra uh, words. Heart chakra can is pretty armored up. I'm not feeling a lot of energy coming in at um, pretty much at all. Going out, there is some, not really. Okay, so let me tell you what you're doing. So your heart chakra is locked down hard. Okay, and 
when you go to give love, what you're doing is you're peeling energy off the top of the chakra and, and swirling it out. You're not actually bringing it from inside your chakra. You're just like, I'm going to flavor this energy with a little bit of the heart chakra and I'm going to send it out, right? That's, it's not actually coming from the heart. It's coming over the heart and out. It is literally with the barest amount of love energy you can put in it from your heart chakra because that's how little there is for you to offer because it's locked down so hard. Okay. Uh, and you're, where's that energy coming from? Hold on. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So you're taking your life force energy to do that. You need to stop doing that. Okay. That shit's got to stop. Okay. So definitely need to do some work on opening the heart. So typically, we close down the heart because we don't want to receive the love that comes with the obligation. It's like, you know, if you loved me, you'd do this, right? Or, you know, I love you this much. You have to love me that much back. I give you this. You must give me that. It's transactional. And you're like, I don't want to owe anybody anything. I don't want to accept an obligation. I'm not accepting the love, right? And it's like, mm -mm, done, right? And the challenge that comes from that is that it, it sets up an inner dynamic that your inner child doesn't know that you shut it down. And so they think that you're not receiving love, therefore you're not lovable. And so it creates that sense inside of yourself because the inner child only knows what's receiving. And if nothing's coming in, then it goes, oh, must not be mine to have. I must not deserve it, right? So that's, a, that's something to really... I would definitely do some work on that. What else do we have in here? Hold on. So there's some grief in the heart chakra around not receiving the love, but your inner child is like, no, I'm fine. Like talking to me, like, I don't need it. I'm okay. I'm fine. No, that grief isn't there. It's fine. I, I don't need it. I'm good. Right. Your inner child is all throughout your energy field here. Normally I'm not engaged. I don't even see your inner child until I'm in the third chakra. Your inner child is like everywhere. So that's definitely your, your next bit of work. Okay. So in denial of the grief, just saying, because that is denial. Your inner child is Cleopatra right now, queen of denial. All right. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then let me look here. Nope, that's good. Anything else in here I need to know about? Nope. All right, let's come down to the third chakra. This is, we went really slow in the beginning. We're going really fast here. Huh? Love it. Okay, coming into the third chakra, the solar plexus. And let's look at your identity. That's interesting. That's never happened before. Lots going on there. So typically when I come to see somebody's identity, it's sort of like standing at their front door and whatever it is that they're showing me is their identity and your entire beingness, I guess is the best way to look at this. It's like, you know, I see the inner child in a castle and I see the person who's the identity at the front gates of the castle is kind of what it comes down to, which is sometimes oftentimes behind a wall. Right. And your castle is actually rotating. <laughs> so I came in to see the identity and it's like, nope. And it just rotated out of, out of view. <laughs> so I would like to ask you to give me permission to see the identity <laughs> uh, because is that a problem? I immediately just got a no. Oh. I'm going to let you, but like when you asked, I was like, no. Okay. Yeah. I just so. need a second. Okay. There okay. we go. All right. Yeah. It's, it's spun back into view again. So, all right. So let's see what's going on here. <sighs> okay. So for most people, I will often see like, you know, an, a mask or an image of who they think they're, you know, who they want other people to see them as. The reason that yours is spinning out is because this is more what you actually see yourself as. And it's like, 
I'm looking for the right words because it's it's kind of like a monster, kind of monster like, kind of demon like, but and then it occasionally just like melts into this goo, and then it comes back up again. So what I'm seeing here is that there's this the for all the work that you've done and you're, so let me just tell you that this is a pretty common thing that people come to when they do a lot of work. Okay. Is that there is this, there is this place where when you've done a certain amount of work on yourself and you've, you've been honest with yourself about who you are and what your trauma has brought you to and all the things and that you may not like what all of what you see sometimes. And, you know, you've got, you're digging into this sense that you feel unloved, which, you know, makes you think that you might not be a good person. And, you know, all of this stuff, we start to question if we're a good person or not, right? We start to question if we're evil in our hearts, right? Um, and this is pretty common. This happens to people further along in the path, right? And so what I'm seeing here is that you're sort of like having hints of this, you know, this, this, do I have to question myself, right? And then it, and then it like goes into goo and it's like, no, I'm fine. Right. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Right. So there's this like back and forth. The thing that I would really encourage you. So what are you in the U.S.? Yes. OK. Did you come in through a, a Christian or a Judeo-Christian upbringing of some kind? No. OK. So uh, U.S. culture is kind of this way anyway. But there is a, an inherent good and evil sort of thing that goes on in the culture. Right. Even if you didn't come up through Christian stuff, if you watched any horror movies or anything, you know, anything like that, there is this like inherent good and evil thing that is, is going around. And so what I'm going to say is don't buy into the duality archetype. Okay. Everybody has light and dark within them. And that is, that is appropriate, right? We are in a duality environment and, 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 you know, we're, we're going to have those things. The thing that comes to mind is the, the story of the, the, the two wolves, right? So Native American, I don't know which, which tribe, but it's a mythology story that is, we each have a wolf inside of us. So it's one's good, one's evil, right? A light and dark, right? And it, you know, which one wins the one you feed the most, right? So, okay. That's the good and evil side. That's, that's that. But there's also just this sense of when you can step into the experiential side of things, instead of the duality side of things, it's less about good and bad and more about experience, right? So, you know, you're still pretty young, but as you get older, you'll, you'll start to realize that a lot of the quote unquote bad things that have happened to you in your life actually turned out to be good for you because, you know, you grew in certain ways, you became a certain person, you know, the, you, you learned something, you, you know, whatever. Right. And so, you know, things become less black and white and they, everything becomes more shades of gray. It's just like, well, you know, it's just an experience. Right. And so the key isn't to judge yourself as good and evil, but to see yourself and say, is this the person who I want to be? Right. Which is different than judging. It's like, is this who I want to be? Right. And to accept who you are initially and say, this is who I am. Yep. Warts and all. Right. Warts and prettiness and all. Right. Everything. <laughs> all of it. And to say, this is who I am. And then to look at that and say, is this who I want to be? You know, I don't have to choose to continue to be the person that I am right now, or I could choose to continue to be this person, or I can build on what, I'm, what I've got and be more, right? Either, or become less. That's your call, right? It's, your, it's an infinitely creative reality. You can choose whatever you want, right? And so that piece of the identity work is very much about, you know, this is, you know, you really look at it and say, am I, am I this person? I went through this, you know, a bunch of years ago. I don't even know how many. And, you know, it's, you, it's a long, hard look in the mirror, right? <laughs> you're just like, oh, I don't know. 
like, you know, you're tallying stuff up on either side and you're trying to decide. And I, I, I would encourage you to just skip that part. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that part is painful and it not necessary, right? The, the, the important part is learning to accept yourself with compassion. That's the end result. Okay. So the, the tallying, the agonizing, the, you know, questioning the blah, is all distraction. Just be like, I am who I am. My, my choices and my history have made me that way. And I, can, and this is where I am, period, with compassion, right? And then where do I want to go from here, right? That's it. Excellent. Okay. All right. So, all right, let's come in and see the inner child who has been talking through this whole thing. Yes, let's see. <laughs> so, okay. I didn't ask you at the beginning of this, how, how do you identify? She, her. Okay. All right. For some reason I had to ask. Okay. All right. So yeah. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So your inner child is running amok. Like she is like running, but she's, she's morphing. So I see her, she starts off like five, six years old. Right. And now she is, and she's running down the hallway and she's in this pretty little dress. And then she like morphs up into somebody big enough to be a Sully in, in Monsters Inc. Right. Ma massive. Right. She's this giant, right. Sully was the big blue guy. Right. And so, you know, she, she's like morphing as she's running into this big old monster, not, not actually Sully, but you know, something similar and like pounding down the hallway in her giant steps and just, 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 and then, you know, she shrinks back down again and then she's back up again and back down again. Okay. So I feel like this is, you know, the thing we've seen throughout your reading is that your inner child is running the bus. Right. And I feel like she morphs into the big monster when she feels threatened and that's her way of protecting herself instead of instead of inviting your adult self in to protect her she's becoming the monster to try and protect herself and so the encouragement would be when you sit down to do your inner child work with her that you explain to her that you are the adult and you will take care of her and protect her and that she doesn't have to hulk out right it's not exactly Hulk either, but you get the idea. Yes. Um, so, because that's what it feels like, right? It feels like she's responding to her feelings of being threatened, but it's also a game to her still at the same time. She's still laughing when she's hulked out, you know, she's just laughing and thunking louder, right? That's kind um, of creepy. I'm not going to lie. It's a little okay. creepy. <laughs> I can imagine it. <laughs> yeah. So she's still, it's still a game to her. Um, but the, the reason she's still laughing is because she's tapped into that well of rage. Okay. There is this well of rage and you don't let it out very often. And, you know, there's a reason I didn't talk about it a lot before is because you don't really, you have it, but you really, you, you kind of keep a lid on it. And, but this is her gleefulness is the, when she hulks out, she is gleeful to release that well of rage. Okay. She is just like, yes, this feels so good. Ha, 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 ha. Somebody else gets it instead of me. Ha, right. It, <laughs> it feels like just desserts. Right. And so when it comes out, it comes out hard and fast and, and, and really with a lot more glee than, than, than you would imagine rage to have. So yeah, there's something very I sad. feel gleeful right now and I don't feel like it's truly me. I feel like it's her because it's being seen and acknowledged. And yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you are her, just for the record. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're you're getting the impression that I'm getting then. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of this is about making her feel safe. 
and uh, stepping in as the adult and taking over the role of the monster, right? So she doesn't have to hulk out, which is, this is the other piece though. This monster is related to the mon monster at the front door, that identity piece, right? Those are related. Those are, they're, they're symbolically related, right? They're not the same entity, but they are symbolically related in your beingness. And so part of your feeling of the, the, the questioning of your, your goodness in the world is the monster that she is pulling into, right? And so they're related in that regard. So if you can, you know, step into the adult role and the defender role uh, as, a, as an adult rather than as a monster, then that's going to impact that feeling at the front gate too, that identity piece. Okay. 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 So let's see, are we done here? Yeah, she says thanks for all the all the fun toys. So she 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 likes the creativity stuff that you're doing. That's what she's referencing. It's all the fun toys. Um she's very happy about that. So she she likes you for that, which means that you have a good relationship already. So this should be easier. If she didn't trust you, that would be much diff much more difficult process. So okay. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay. Um, okay, she's, I don't know why, apple snacks. She's, she's just, so, does that make sense to you? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. She was just like, I'm going to go have some apple snacks now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <Have fun. laughs> um, and she, by that, she meant cut up ap apples. But yeah, anyway. So that's not something you normally eat? Apple snacks? It's just like cut I mean, up apples. I have a apple I was gonna have with lunch, but I haven't okay. been thinking about it. Hmm. Okay, no, maybe it's just the apple that you have ready for lunch that she's seeing and being like, okay, apple snacks. Anyway, I don't know. Weird stuff happens sometimes. Uh all right. So the let's look at what the blocks are in here. Let's see what we have. So not good enough is in there. Um, ooh. Okay. Are you challenging yourself in something right now? Are you learning something new and feeling like you suck at it? Always. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, I'm your person. You know that your people are always like that. <laughs> well, the, the reason I ask is because normally I just see the block and it's just sitting there. Right. But this particular one was like moving and then going, right. It's like went up the, the, like the shoot up a roller coaster, you know, straight up thing. Right. And that doesn't normally happen. And so that's why I was asking if there was something in particular that you were, you were experiencing that with. So, you know, this again, the, oh, okay. That's why. All right. So so one of, so remember we were talking about pulling yourself out of feeling like you're powerful, right? And the distractions and all the things. So another way to reduce your ability to feel like you're powerful is to reduce your ability to feel like you're competent. And this, this is showing me that it's the, I'm going to do a bunch of things that I am completely incompetent at so that I don't have to feel like I'm competent and therefore powerful, right? So this is, again, the, you know, encouragement to limit your new things <laughs> to a smaller amount, right? To, to like keep it small so that you don't feel o overall incompetent because you're constantly going, oh, I can't get this, right? It's, it's a dominant energy that you're generating through your hyperfixation on, on new things in which you are not competent yet. I see. Okay. And so this is an encouragement to pull back and to focus on your competency so that you can start to overcome this not good enough thing. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. What else do we have in here? Got some not important going on. Not surprising if you come from a challenge childhood, not important as often the case. It's like, um, 
this is a quick fix initially. It, it requires more work in the long run, but I'll give you the short answer in the short term, which is put yourself at the top of your own priority list. Okay, not the bottom, not the middle, the very tippy top, you first. You give from your overflow, not from your uh, overwhelm, right? Yeah, okay, not from your emptiness but from your overwhelm is what came up for you. I always say emptiness and overwhelm is what came up for you. So that's the relevant piece. Okay. And that's everything in this chakra. That's, that's yeah, good. Low, low blocks. So you, you're you ready. You're, there are very few blocks here. There's themes, but very few blocks. So you're, you're about to shift to a new level on this. So, all right, let's come down to the second chakra. Anything else in this one before I go? Hold on. Nope. Okay. Second chakra. All right. Let's see here. Yep. Got good energy flow. I don't see anything in the addiction attachment area. I don't see shame. I see a little bit of guilt. Mama guilter. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this doesn't feel like it's yours. It feels like it was instilled, right? It's like, uh, I got to feel guilty about that. It's, it's not like hardcore. It's just a little bit, but it's just around the edges. Right. So I would encourage you that when the, the guilt comes up to be like, nah, I don't have to feel guilty about that. It's fine. Right. <laughs> just just go for that okay let's see what else do we have how's passion doing uh, kind of suppressed why that deservingness stuff okay all right so this is so i don't, I don't know if you've heard because you listen to my podcast a lot but you probably heard that deserving is a made-up word it's like a made up concept used to manipulate you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're buying into the deserving thing. You know, I don't deserve it or I'm not worthy of it. Uh, and that is keeping you from your full passion. There's, there's also. A... Mm, oh, okay. I got it. So. Your second chakra holds your wild woman. I never talk about this, but it is absolutely true. And it's really relevant for you. So because your inner child is hulking out because of the rage factor, your wild woman is your... Mm, I'm not really id-based, but kind of id-based. She's your animal self, right? And so she is very nonverbal and non logic based. She is very body based. She is an a kinesthetic element of you. Right. And so your wild woman is being repressed in this chakra because of the hulking out that's happening in the third chakra for your inner child. Um, because your wild woman is far more powerful than your inner child and therefore far more dangerous to let loose with the well of rage, right? And so that is what is also restricting your passion because your passion comes from that wild woman. It comes from her elemental connection to the, the beingness of the earth, okay? You are literally the only person I have ever said this to in more than 3,000 readings. So I'm like, wow, I'm learning new things right now. So it's good. The So... You are, you are holding her down in an effort to keep everybody safe around you. Okay. Which by the way, I'm going to point out is, is being a good person just for the record. And the, so, but it's also, it's also suppressing your passion. Okay. And it's, it's, it's smushing your sexual energy. I mean, it's not like it's not there. It's just the the passion that could be there would be much more if you were not smushing this okay so 
this again is about, you know, emptying that well of rage so that, you know, taking it over as an adult and managing it and learning how to, how to clear it and all that stuff, because that will put you more in contact with that wild woman within again. Okay. All right. Anything else in this chakra? Let me look. Okay, so they're, they're telling me that there are other things that you know are there, but they are not relevant to this level for you. Okay, I don't know what those things are. They're not showing them to me, but they're saying that, that you're going to be going, well, what about this? And she didn't say anything about that. And, and, I'm, and what they're saying is, yes, there's something else there, but it's not relevant to this level. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, so and that's everything. Okay, let's come down into the root chakra. We already know about the grounding and the steel plate, so we're gonna skip that. And then we're gonna to go to, what are we doing next? Fear, safety, fears around safety and security. This is sort of general anxiety for you. That's what this relates to is general anxiety. It's not around something specific. It's just this waiting for the other shoe to drop energy. You know, it's that that's it's not quite hypervigilance anymore. It used to be, but it, now it's just that, you know, mm, things are too good. What's going to happen, right? That sort of energy. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the, the answer to that is what if even more good things happen? Because you're what ifing the worst case scenario. What if you what if the best case scenario, right? So just changing your mindset on that. Okay, what else do they want me to see in here? Hold on. I feel like there's different things I'm looking for with you. Hmm. Okay, so you know how they have those Zen gardens with sand and like the, you, you just scrape it clean and you start over fresh and then you make a new pattern. It yep. feels like that's what you're doing right now. This, this feels like what I would see with foundational deconstruction where like you're ripping out the foundations of who you believe yourself to be and then like waiting for the new thing to come into form. So uh, is that, does that resonate for you? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you a little piece of advice around foundational deconstruction. One of the, the hardest things, actually probably the hardest thing about foundational deconstruction is getting to the point where the sand is cleared, which is what is the case for you right now, and not trying to define it again. Because the, if you were to define it consciously, the new self, then you're going to define it with your existing thinking. And that is not what you want to do because your existing thinking is who you used to be. And you just spent all this time digging up the foundation of that person, right? You don't want to put it back into place consciously because it's going to be put it back into place in the same way that the previous person was, right? So <clears throat> you have to wait for it to recoalesce of, a, of its own accord. Okay. And that is probably the hardest thing because that means that you sit in this space of like, I don't know who I am. I'm not sure what's going on. I can't even, I, I like, for me, it was like three weeks of walking around running into doorways because I didn't know where my edges were coming out of the shower with shampoo on my hair because I, my rote, rote tech, you know, patterns were not working because everything was gone, right? I would like forget to put toothpaste, toothpaste on my brush, you know, I mean, all kinds of stuff, right? I've had all of that happen before. Yeah. Everything you just said. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it and I was not safe to drive. I did not drive for three weeks because I was not safe to drive because I did not, if I couldn't figure out how to walk, I certainly wasn't going to drive, right? <laughs> like, like, ah. Um. And it's not that severe for everybody, but it, it was for me. So, and so, you know, the key is to just let it, let it come back when it does. Okay. I still see it turning the, the sand for you. Like it's still, it's not quite fully cleared, right? So you're still in that sweeping clean phase. Okay. Which is, so much there's nothing I need to do for it. I just need to wait. Just wait. Yeah. Okay. Don't try and push it. Don't be impatient. Just wait. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. They're telling me that most of the other stuff I look for is not relevant here. Let me, I do want to check your manifestation bubble though. Um, let me see how that's going. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of sharing off between the second and third chakras. Again, this is a, the, the worthiness deserving thing. It's the suppression of that wild woman piece. It's, um, yeah, it's, even if we got through that, let me, let me push that up and see if we get through that, if we clear those. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's sharing off at the heart chakra with the lack of receiving. So you've got to, so, okay. Theme time. Okay. Inner child. We knew that. All right. Lack of receiving is the other theme for you. You've got it in the third eye. You've got it in the heart chakra. It is showing up reflected in the, the identity stuff too. And then, you know, bring your, well, that's the inner child stuff, bring your inner adult into the inner child stuff and clearing the well of rage. Those are, those are your things. Those are, those are the three things to deal with. Okay. Order of operations. I start with the inner child because she's everywhere. Okay. <laughs> it's just all over the freaking place. She is demanding your attention. So I would say, start with her. And then from there, I would do the opening the heart and then the well of rage piece, because when you open your heart, you won't be building as much rage. And so there'll be less to clear. So, because the rage is often a function of, you know, I, there's a sense of, so part of it's perspective, we see things and we take things badly and whatever, but part of it is this, I came from a place of unconditional love and, and it was everywhere around me. And I was, I was unconditional love and, and this place is not right. And so there's this, this sense of betrayal by the universe almost, right. You know, it's not that that wasn't present in your field, but, but the, the, the not experiencing it is, is enraging, right? So there's, there's, so when you can open the heart, it actually helps. So yes. All right. Any questions about anything we've talked about? Do you have any resources to begin inner child work? So I, so can you go take classes on inner child work? You absolutely can. I, I don't have a specific one to give you, but um, you could do that. I'm, I'm a big fan of just go sit in meditation and talk to your inner child, right? <laughs> we, we make it harder than it has to be in a lot of cases, right? So, you know, sit down, talk to your inner child, have a conversation, see what she says. And, you know, if things break down, then read some child psychology books, right? <laughs> you know, because that's going to be the way you're going to have a conversation with her anyway. So, um, but the, the, the inner child piece for you is very much going to be about taking her out of the driver's seat and telling and getting her to believe that you will protect her. Those two pieces, if you can accomplish those, when you accomplish those, because it's not an if, it's a when, because I know you'll do the work because you've been doing work clearly because I'm seeing it in your field, right? So when you can accomplish those, when you do, then that's going to solve pretty much everything that I've seen, okay? And that's just simply having a conversation, okay? The heart chakra work that I would do some work on. You know, we do that in the, in the, uh, woo squared program. We do that. And we do the well of rage work in there as well. And, but I would definitely advise getting support for those pieces because there are many, they're multi-layered and, and completely tapestried in with a bunch of other crap at the same time. So it, it, it's just easier to do it with some help and with a focused program. Okay. The inner, inner child stuff you should be able to do on your own, you know, for the most part, unless you get really, really stuck. And that's in which case, you know, you may want to reach out for help, but inner child stuff is typically just a matter of sitting down and spending the time. 
It's quality time with your inner child. They'll tell you anything if you spend quality time with them, right? So, you know, they're, they're, you've got a good relationship with yours. So I don't imagine it would take too terribly long for that. But if somebody is in a position where their inner child doesn't trust them, then that can take longer. Kathy talks about how it took her weeks and weeks, maybe even months for her to sit with her inner child until, until her inner child trusted her. So, you know, just depends on the person as to how long that takes. Okay. So anything else? Any other questions? Not the moment. Okay. All right. So, so I think we'll call that good for today then. And thank you so much for coming onto the show and for providing a lovely review for the website, which is how you, or for the, the podcast, which is how you got picked to be a winner on the, on the show. And that's it for today. Don't forget to like, su- subscribe and share. And remember that what you focus on is what expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Have a great one. We'll see you on Monday. And we're out. Okay. How was that? Very good. It was a lot to think about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the part about the inner child, like transforming into a monster, that, that definitely felt that. And that definitely tied together some things that I've been wondering about because I do feel like I've been like kind of turning towards inner child work a little bit more. Like I've been mm-hmm. a little curious about it and I've been noticing the the raw once in a while. And I'm like, I don't entirely know where that's coming from. If that's just like shadow work I need to do. Like, I don't know. It kind of scares me a little bit. So I haven't been focusing on it. Yeah. Well, she's tapping into that inner, inner, you know, well of rage. That's where the raw is coming from. It's from inside of you. you you're already, you already have it. So it's just a matter of dealing with it. So that's the other piece of the puzzle. So, but you can move that into your adult self where you can be more, you know, not super in control because rage is not super controllable. You do have to empty it in order to control it, but, but you can do that by, by, you know, there's work to be done around it, but moving into your adult self gives you a little more control over it than, than the inner child stuff. It's good to hear that it's just my inner child and not like an entity because sometimes I feel like it can be very vicious. And I was like, you know, yeah, not an entity. It's okay. Yeah. Not an entity. So don't have to worry about that. It would have come at my face first. If that had been the case, (laughs) they'd be like, okay. Yeah. Not a problem. I normally, if, if you've got an entity in you, that's the very first thing I see. So I've, I've had, situations where I've done readings for people who had one or many entities and that that is always up front so because they don't want me coming in because they see me and they're like "Mm, if you come in then you're going to get me out and I'm like yes you are correct (laughs) (laughs) so they come at my face I guess you know what's happening here (laughs) yes I will take that down it'll be fine Yeah. yeah But yeah, no, no entity. It's just your inner child and your own well of rage and your own glee at being able to take it out on other people instead of it coming at you, you know, because, you know, that's human. So (laughs) yeah. So no big deal. Anything else? Um, no shields look solid. Yeah. I didn't see a problem with the shields. So you will want to close your, your shield up for, you know, the space you made for me in case you didn't specifically tune it to me because I've already pulled, pulled my energy I back. I did a sp- special Good little job. shape just for Good you. Job. So well done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This, it's very special to me to get to share this with you. And I feel like I've been learning a lot from the other energy reviews you've been posting. Okay. So I hope other people can can learn as well and thank you very much for your time you're very welcome happy to oblige and so we'll i'm sure i will hear messages from you online (laughs) we'll keep in touch at least now i have a face to put with the name so i'm glad to have it thank you all right thank you have a good one you too bye all right bye-bye
So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh